And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Kasarian, and we are back spotlighting Rotary Craft. How is everyone today? Good, I hope? I hope so as well. So here's what we're going to be doing right now. We're going to look at a couple of the really cool machines that I've seen in Rotary Craft. Understand, we can't get through everything that Reich has added to this mod. I think it would honestly take me probably 30 to 40 episodes to get through everything in this mod and really explain it. So instead, I'm just going to give you guys a quick shot at some of the things that I thought were pretty cool when I took a look. So, I'll meet you guys back when we're ready to demonstrate. The first item that you guys should be aware of is this machine, the Coil Winder. The Coil Winder allows you to wind up these things. Um, excuse me, not those. These. These wind springs, alright? Now all you have to do, let's search for wind, is take one of these wind springs, put it right in the coil winder, and you'll see it'll actually start to store up kilojoules. And then what you can do is you can take these, these things that are charged up with kilojoules, and you can place them in your machines to use them effectively. So that's the coil winder. It's actually running pretty well because I have quite a lot of power running into it right now. Let me clean this out of the way here. All right, so now that we know how to use the coil winder, what can we do with it? Well, that's a good question, and I should have a bevel gear around here somewhere. Ah, there we go, bevel gear. You know, with all these systems, I'm getting really tired of trying to deal with figuring out where the inputs and the outputs and the export, I, I need a way to see it constantly. Well, thankfully, Rake has given us I.O. goggles. These things are pretty cool. Ender pearl, some steel, and some redstone. Drop them on our heads. Hey, look at that. We can see the inputs and outputs for every machine on the network. Nice. So, our input's on the wrong side. So we need to swap these. How about that, all right? Now we need to get it going up. And these things are kind of glitching out on me a little bit. So let's do that. We need to go up to blue, all right? Output blue. Because I'm going to show you something else cool. This is the CCTV screen. That was not where I wanted to place it. This is the CCTV screen. Just like that. And you can see our input and output is lined up correctly. And it's connected to this aerial camera. Now, why do I have three lappies sitting in the aerial camera? That's a pretty good question for you guys. The answer to that is, it's much like Ender Chests. Those of you who've used the Ender Chests mod. What we're doing is we put our power source in, our wine spring, and we're designating a channel with the lappies. This channel is blue, blue, blue. I open this, I select blue, blue, blue. Awesome. And we can take a look at the info, and shift right click to use the camera. Hey, that's what the aerial, aerial camera says. Pretty good, pretty good. Now, what happens if we change the channel? Well, let's get ourselves some green dye. Just like that. So open this up and we'll set this to blue, green, blue. Well, we don't have a camera on blue, green, blue now, do we? Well, what happens if we went over to here? Let's take the, let me get another wind spring. Like that. And let's get another... If I can remember how to spell Arial. How can I not remember how to spell Arial today? There we go. Let's just do camera. Arial camera. There was another one I wanted to show you guys. Unfortunately, it's not available right now. So let's go over to here. Decent distance away. And let's put up another aerial camera. Put that up. We'll get some lapis. And some green dye. Alright. Now let's see what our monitor is showing us. Oh, that's a different image. 
And that's another different image. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the aerial camera. The next item I'm going to show you is the ultrasound machine. Well, it doesn't seem to be seeing much down there. And we're scanning and we're scanning. There's a cave detected. So basically what happens is this device basically determines your area of operations. It It's, um, how do I explain it best? Let's try it here. No, nothing? You're not just going to detect anything down there? Okay. Basically the way this works, and I'd have to dig around for a while to show you guys, is that it detects when there's space on the other side of a block. So if I did this, ah, okay, see? It can pick up that there's ore on the other side of this block, and that there's air on the other side of this block. That's not too bad. It's a nice, easy way. Now it's telling me that there's ore, there's a cave back there. All right, not too bad at all. Just a nice, quick, and easy way for you to find some caves. Now, for these machines that don't have a direct power system built into them, we come back in here and get our winder out of somewhere, wherever it decided to disappear to. Coil winder. I believe we can actually charge these things up in the coil winder. Don't quote me on that though. I'm not entirely certain how those things charge. Anyways, let's get on to the next part of the spotlight. We are going to take a look at this thing, the fireball launcher, because I think it's cool. Huh. Doesn't seem to want to work today, does it? Well, let's take a look at it in the tool items descriptions. Fireball launcher. It can be charged like a bow, act to maximum power. Okay. Hmm. Doesn't seem to want to cooperate. Let's see if it has a recipe. Well, it has a recipe. Let's me take a look, and I'll be right back. And of course, I don't read the entire instructions. It requires a fire charge to operate. And dark blue is our highest power level, right? That's dark. Oh, jeez, that's, uh, that's quite a bang. That's quite a bang. That's, uh, that's pretty powerful there, guys. That's a, that's a pretty powerful weapon of destruction there. I wouldn't like to run into the wrong side of that thing. That's a lot of pain. That is a lot of pain. And what fun would we have without a TNT cannon? Yep, TNT cannon. Don't freak out about the interface. Basically, you have a launch angle, fuse time, I believe that's in seconds, and your compass angle. Remember, 90 degrees is opposite to your north. So right now, we're firing towards the south, okay? You can set your angle, your compass, even your velocity. Now, the cool thing about this is, it'll fire off whatever you put in there. So if I do this, fire it off a three round burst, right? Right. Now let's see what it did when we go out there. Ah, right, I need to put my helmet back on if I want to actually be able to fly. Whoa, that's a, that's a bit of damage out there, guys. That is a bit of oh, damage. Now, this doesn't change anything about vanilla TNT mechanics, so they're not going to detonate on impact or anything like that, but you can get some pretty decent damage out of it. You know, let's let's raise up that fuse time to a full 30. All right? And let's, let's set this thing to continuous fire, shall we? Now, see how it's gravity affected still? But now I can still say... Oh, God, what is it doing? I don't even know what it started doing there. Oh, it reset it. So don't try and change that interface when you're actually working with it, okay? But for example, I can set up to a 45 degree launch angle with a 600 velocity. 
In theory, that should give me the best power. Ah, uh, okay, we can't quite get it up that high. Let's call it at a 25 degree angle. Yeah, that should work. Throw that in. Fire in the hole. Now you can also set the fuse time. So if I want to set this to five seconds. That's setting somewhere out there. Or I could reduce the velocity. Let's only shoot it at 20. That was a bad idea. But you guys get the point. All right, so here's how this works, all right? Take a screwdriver, shift right click, okay? Now open it, we're in target mode. We're still in target mode. There we go, we're out of target mode. If I right click again, we're out of target mode. Shift right click, we are back in target mode. Now all I have to do is select a target and prepare the cannon to fire. I can get some more TNT going on here. I can't really see what's going on out here, but... Ah, okay. The ceasefire. There we go. So there's a little bit of a derp there, but that's okay. Let's uh, let's reload that. Prepare to fire. Fire will. Now, oh, I think it's in ticks. All right. Let's reset that to sixty. Oh, we have damage impacts. Look at that, guys. We are chewing through that target. Nice. Our Lee army would be proud. All right. Let's find another target for this baby. I don't like that tree. I don't like that tree at all. Prepare to fire the TNT cannon. Clear the way. Now I imagine some of you guys who are pretty decent targeteers. Let's walk this fire, shall we? They used to call this walking fire. Now, can you imagine what this looks like with a whole battery of these things opening up on the on you? That would be awesome. Let's look at the devastation we've done. Jetpack on. Oh, that's a bit of damage, guys. So that's where we initially hit. <clears throat> yeah, you don't want to be caught under the rain of this thing, that's for certain. Jeez. Speaking of things you don't want to be caught in front of. How about a railgun? A railgun sounds like fun. Now we have to load this thing with ammunition. And you get a whole bunch of different types. From the one kilogram, which costs just three HSLA. Could add some wood to it, make it a two kilogram. All the way up to a 32,000 kilogram using bedrock ingots. Why not? Let's get a little close. All right, let's tackle this issue from the side. You gonna engage? Ah, it was starting to do a seek and then a zombie moved. That's too bad. Anyways, trust me, this thing is pretty dangerous. Um, I've seen it shoot before, and it's entertaining. Why does that skeleton not have his bow? Huh, that's weird. Be careful with the railgun. It will attack your friends and your foes. But there's one other cool feature. Click, Right-click on it with a key, and you can add people to your whitelist, so the railgun won't attack them. I like it. Though you could also take them off of it without telling them just for some, you know, trollish amusement. Seen as something else that's quite dangerous. Why don't I show you the heat ray? Whoa, what was that, you ask? Yeah, look at that. It actually melted through the target. Oh, and that hurts me too. Hey, what happens if I stick a cow in front of this thing? I wonder. 
Oh, that's one crispy cow. Indeed. The heat ray is wicked cool. It'll melt items down. So if I wonder if I take some dirt out, what it'll do to dirt. Stone and cobblestone become lava, as you just saw. Dirt becomes sand. Sand becomes glass. And it will fry through. If you look at the range, it has literally gone clear through this test target. There we go. That appears... Nope, it's still going out this far. Let's see how far it'll actually reach. I have a suspicion it's losing power as time goes on. Oh yeah, and those blocks will help you. Well, for a little while at any rate. So it looks like it has a pretty long range. That, that looks to be it, right there. Nope, it's still going. It's getting slower as it goes, but it's still going. Jeez. That is one deadly weapon. Now imagine if you pointed this thing at your enemy or your rival's base. Yeah, that could be a fun day. Well, a fun day for you, that is. I've shown you how to blow up everyone else's base. Why don't I show you how to protect yours? Oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted that. This is a field generator. Force field. Field radius, 20. Whoa. I know, right? That's quite the trick, ain't it? Let's run into the field. Oh, I can run through it. That's, that's not a big deal. wonder if a zombie could run through it. And let's set it to midnight. Spawn zombie, please. Hey. Oh, nope, nope. See, he can't get through. He cannot get through the field. Then I'm willing to bet that our buddies who wanted to shoot a TNT cannon or a heat ray at us from somewhere over there probably can't fire into the field either. Now, this thing does run on power. It is pretty cool. I actually, I wicked like the effect, too. I wicked like this generator effect. That is really awesome. I may have to use this. Now, does it go all the way down and around as well? We should find out. Oh, yeah, look at that. It does. It's a full spherical generator. That is nice. Hey. You weren't allowed to do that. That is wicked nice. Hats off for the artwork and the design on this one, guys. Hats off. What I wanted to show you guys is a display screen. Huh. How does this thing work? Well, we need to get a wine spring. Not one word, mister. Not one word. All right, so let's insert this thing in. Well, that's pretty cool. That is indeed pretty cool. Ah, to add in the text, write in a book, and then right-click the machine with the book. Okay, well, let's get a book and quill, right? Welcome to Mr. Kassarian's Rotary Craft Mod Spotlight. Done. I believe it said shift right click now, didn't it? Write in a book, right click the machine with the book. Nope. Sign and close, welcome. Sign and close. Ah, there we go. Welcome to Mr. Kassarian's Rotary Craft Mod Spotlight in nice futuristic text. I like it. I like it a lot. Another item I want to show you guys is also pretty cool. Basically, we've blown this area up quite a bit. Like, we've seriously done some major damage to it, and I kind of want to get places. Yeah, I, I don't want to be stuck here forever, so let's get ourselves one of these. Oops, mistype. Let's get ourselves a light bridge. How about I just call it a bridge? There we go. Light bridge. That's a lot of power that thing's gonna want. Oh well. Hey. 
We just generate a light bridge. It'll go through liquids just fine. How far will this thing actually reach? Whoa, that's a pretty decent range of that light bridge, guys. Look at that. Nice. Now, it does require a fair amount of power. And you do have to be careful with it, you know? But that is really nice. Really nice. How much power is it getting? 16.777 megawatts. So, yeah, but it's nice and stable. There's only one problem. Let's see if what this does. Yeah. If it's nighttime, it's not going to run. Well, if it doesn't have light. So let's see. Does a torch work, I wonder? Does not appear to. Ah, yes, it does. It just has to be directly above it. So now, oops, that's a hole. We have a light bridge, which is pretty useful because I've kind of torn this terrain up a little bit. Yeah. We can protect the terrain. We can destroy it. Boy, this is quite a cool mod, isn't it, guys? I actually really want to get using this at a PvP server at some point, if I ever really did PvP. Maybe this ICBM MFFS, um, Calclavia's MFFS with uh, moving frameships. Yeah, that would be fun. All right, let me find some more things to show you, and I'll be right back. Guys, the last item I want to show you is this item. This is the arrow gun, and the arrow gun is pretty cool. Let me show you how cool it is, all right? I'm going to drop out of creative. All right? I'm going to turn my jetpack on. Notice how many hearts I have? I have full armor on my power armor. Ow. Yeah, it's not taking that long for that thing to hurt me. Now remember, we're using an absolutely ridiculous amount of power right now. But still, that is a very, very, very powerful machine. In fact, let me demonstrate how powerful it is by spawning in an iron golem. Vanilla iron golem. You know, the thing with more HP than you want to think about. Yeah, that, that did not take long at all, did it, guys? That did not take long at all. And the best part is, this is a fairly early game item. If you just take a look at the arrow gun. Arrow gun. Yeah, it's just some steel base panels at a dispenser. Now, mind you, this thing is operating at ridiculous powers right now because of, you know, this entire setup back here, which you probably wouldn't actually have in your game world. But the point still stands. It is a machine that you get early on that stays current for most of the game. What about the range of this thing's like? Ow. Ow, ow, ow. All right, let's, let's not try that again, shall we? All right, so this has been my spotlight of Rotary Craft. These have been some of the cool tools, machines, and toys you get to play with, in addition to just, you know, the boring item creation stuff. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Go check out this mod. I've really enjoyed playing with it, and I have a feeling you guys will too. Thank you very much, and as always, guys, happy mining.